Hi guys, I hope you all can hear me. Good morning all and welcome you all in this AZ500 certification webinar. Uh, guys, we'll do one thing. We'll wait for more for five minutes and we'll start the webinar as the participants are still joining. So let them join and we'll go ahead in four, five minutes more. Uh, till the time, I will be sharing the social media platform links. So if you are interested to get the upcoming webinars or workshops update, you all can go and follow us on our social media platforms.
Okay, so we'll start the webinar now. Hello and welcome you all in this AZ500 full day certification webinar. Uh, myself, Shaitali, your host for this webinar. I will be there to guide you all throughout the session. You just have to use the chat window for, uh, for your queries and questions. If you have any queries or question, you can ask in the chat box. So we'll help you out with the same. Also, thanks to all for joining us today. We really appreciate your participation in this webinar. Then talking about our event and webinar sponsor, Synergetics. So Synergetics is India's one of a kind corporate learning solution company. So we'll get to question now uh, who we are and what we do. So and answering to that question, uh, we browse to our offerings, also give comprehensive advisory services to the client who wish to modernize their framework. We do educate, advise, implement, and manage. Then the solutions Synergetics offers is persona based onboarding. Then we have onboarding add on certification solution. Then we have certification plus add on solution, reskilling solution. Then we have emerging technology training solution, certification hackathon solution, cloud adoption solution, latest technology training solution, sales pre training solution, practice playbook, and architecting solution. So AZ500 comes under onboarding add-on, certification, certification plus add-on solution. So what the Microsoft certification do? So it will give you a uh, comprehensive learning. You will get uh, you will get to get trained, build confidence to appear the exam and get uh, certified, like get uh, recognized. Then this is the delivery method which we follow. First, we have guided self learning in which we do provide an overview of the certification and you can go for the certification. Then we have blended learning, which includes self-paced learning. Also, we will provide you with the material and mentoring. Then we have instructor-led training which include full flesh training related to the certification. Then the certification benefit. So the certification will help you to build a comprehensive and advance uh, your uh, your capability in the organization also add profit to your business and you can enhance the brand reputation and then skilling journey as you can see there are three types of certification fundamental advanced role based and expert level In fundamental certification, Synergetics do provide training on AZ900, AI900, DP900, PL900, and SC900. So these are the domains in which we do provide fundamental certification training. Then we have role-based certifications. That's, that is associate level certifications. AZ104, then we have AZ204, which is for developers. Then we have AI102, DP203, PL100, 200, and 300. 
and SC200 and 300. Then the expert level training, like AZ305 as your solution architect export. Then we have SC100, cybersecurity architect export. PL600, power platform solution architect export. And AZ400, developer engineer export. So to know more about the certifications or the paid trainings which Synergetics provide, you all can connect with us. I will share the details in the chat box for you all later on. Then our certification offerings. So certification will help you to increase your visibility, expand your knowledge and skill. We do provide certification add-ons, onboarding add-ons, like short, du short duration modules and more. Then today's training is organized and handled by ATC community, that is Azure Tech community. So this ATC community is open to all the people who are interested in cloud technologies. Under this ATC community, we have different communities like emerging technology community for all. Then we have Azure Tech Community Pune, specifically for Pune course. Then we have emerging technology community Surat for Surat Techies. Then we have Azure Tech Community Nagpur for Nagpur course. So you just have to install the meter app on your phone or on your device to get this uh, communities followed. I will share the links in the chat box for you all related to these communities. So we do uh, update or we do put an event or upcoming workshops over there. So you can register through that also. Code of conduct. Guys, please note, no one is allowed to take the screenshot of the presentation while speaker is serving or sharing his screen. No one is allowed to do the screen record as well. The recordings will be available to the participants once it will get ready. The recording will be uh, posted or uploaded on our official YouTube channel. So. For that, you have to follow our YouTube channel. The official YouTube channel link will be given to you all in the chat box. The speaker for this certification training is Ms. Komal Sharma. She is an MCT, Microsoft Certified Trainer, and currently works with Synergetics as a trainer consultant. Then agenda for this webinar, you will get to know more about the AZ-500 certification and benefits of it. Then also we do have a complimentary learning achievement batch, which will be sharing, which will be sh uh, shared with you later on. And then this is the journey path for the, the AZ-500 certification, which will be explained to you all by our speaker ahead in this webinar. As I said, we do provide a complimentary learning achievement batch with the participants. So basically this learning achievement batch includes the study material for the certification, AZ-500 certification. So you just have to follow certain steps to get this batch activated. You have to create uh, your profile on Microsoft Learn and the URL will be given with the steps. You just have to click on that URL and get your batch activated. Once you uh, click on the redemption button, the batch will activate it and it will reflect in few minutes on your profile. You can see the batch under achievements like it has been shown over here. Then the modules and courses will be provided to you all in that batch. So make sure you get your batch activated. Then do follow us on our social media platforms like LinkedIn, Facebook, 
Twitter and YouTube to get the upcoming updates, which we do post on our social media platforms. That's all. Thank you. Now I would like to hand over the mic to the speaker for this webinar. Yes, Pumal ma'am. Well, you can go ahead. Thank you. Yeah, um, thank you. Good morning, everyone. I hope I'm audible. Yes, yes, we can hear you. Okay, so let me just share my screen, then I will start. OK, so I hope my screen is visible. So once again, good morning, everyone. I welcome you all to AZ 500 session. That is Microsoft Azure Security Technologies. And the instructor for the session, Kumal Sharma. I am Microsoft Certified Trainer. I am a Security and Compliance Platform Solution Architect, and I'm associated with Synergetic. I have handled my engagement on enterprise architecting and learning consultancy solution with the seamless competency. I have offered innovative solutions on Microsoft 365 identity and access management, compliance and architecting, and infrastructure management for portal development using SharePoint integration management. I have in few certification on Microsoft Power Platform, Microsoft uh, 365 services, and Microsoft security services. AZ 500, this exam is a Microsoft Azure certification exam that uh, mainly focus on Azure security technologies. It measures your ability to implement your security control and maintain your security posture within the Azure cloud environment. So to prepare for the Azure AZ 500 exam, Microsoft offers you the official study material and resources that can help you uh, gain the necessary knowledge and skills, and that will be really helpful for you to clear the uh, uh, AZ-500 exam. So AZ-500, like you all are attending today, is for uh, AZ-500 session. It is expected uh, that uh, when you are attending this session or you are going to appear for AZ-500 exam, you must be having a Zool fundamental understanding. So if you are done with AZ-900 exam, that is really is going to help you out to go with a further certification path for AZ. OK, so this AZ-900 is what? It's a fundamental that is uh, basically uh, to help you and that is designed to give you the fundamental level knowledge about the cloud services, how these services works, what is Azure portal is all about, what are the different uh, cloud technologies are there, what are the, how you can work with the different resources, how you can deal with the security parts and all. So this is for the fundamental knowledge. So once you are done with Azure fundamental, you are good to go towards the next role based certification path that is Azure Security Engineer Associate, that is AZ500. So this course is designed especially for the Azure security path. So if you are an administrator of your organization who wants to implement the security, you want to monitor the activity related with the security, and you want to maintain your security infrastructure, then this is the right certification for you to appear. Now, of course, like when you are in any organization, you are performing any role, what is the next goal? So our next goal is always to achieve the expert level, correct? So as here, we have started our journey with a fundamental. We are heading towards the role-based certification. Now to prove ourselves and to prove our skill that now we are expert, we have a different certification that is Microsoft Certified Azure Solution Architect Expert. So this uh, a certification is designed for the Azure Solution Architect. 
who create the solution for the compute network storage and security. So when you are done with this certification, you will be expert. OK, it means now you have proven your skill, your knowledge that now you are expert with the Azure technology and Azure solution. So this was all about the Microsoft certification journey for Azure security. OK, so start with AZ 900 for those who are done like See, many of you might say that no, I haven't done with AZ 900. So can I appear for AZ 500 or can I directly go with the AZ 500? So I will say yes. There is no restriction that first you have to go with the AZ 900 compulsory, then you can go with the roll rate certification. No, it's not like that. If you have worked with Azure portal, little bit cloud based understanding you have, no problem, you can directly jump to Azure uh, security engineer certification. And then, of course, the next uh, option is for you to go for the expert level. Guys, if you have any doubt, you can put your queries in the chat box. I will uh, frequently be jumping back to the uh, my screen where you have put your uh, queries and all. And of course, I will be addressing the same. OK, so now easy 500. So as a security engineer of your organization, like you play actually a crucial role uh, that is like ensuring the security and compliance of Microsoft Azure environment. So your primary responsibility is what? This is to design, implement, and manage your security control and measure to safeguard your Azure resources, your data, application, and different services. So here you have like uh, security design and implementation. Second, you will be working with identity and access management. And third, you will be dealing monitoring and incident response. So here. Now uh, we'll come back to this screen later. So let me explain you what are the different study areas that are covered under this exam. So like, uh, for example, in this exam, you will be getting near about 60 questions. OK, so out of these 60 questions, the 25 to 30 percent of the question will be from this study area that is manage identity and access. And then uh, the second study area is secure networking. That is again uh, for 20 and uh, to 25 percent of the question you will be uh, getting. Third is secure compute storage and database. And the last one that is manage your security operation. OK, so this percentage is nothing just the weightage of uh, the study area in the exam. So as this course is for four days, as today, this is like uh, here, I will be guiding you. Uh, what are the different modules are there? I will try to cover up as much as module I can cover today. But if you are really going to appear for the exam and you, really, you want to go with the uh, uh, four days training, so here this course covered the four days uh, different agenda for each day. Like for the one day here, we will be starting with the role based access control. We focus on Azure policy, resource manager logs, conditional access policies, privilege identity management, how we can implement the directory synchronization. Then the second day agenda, it covers network and application security groups, Azure Firewall, how you can configure and secure your ACR and AKS. Third day, it covers the agenda for key vaults, securing Azure SQL database, service endpoints, and securing your storage. And the day four agenda, Azure monitor, Microsoft Defender for cloud, and uh, and then simultaneously for each day with each topic, we do VNB provide the hands-on. Okay. So now for the two days agenda, like uh, we will be starting with the different modules what is covered in the courses. I will try to cover as many as topic I can do along with the labs. OK, of course, 
hands on would not be able to possible like i would not be able to uh, give you the hands on because the time restriction and because of the uh, resources like we do not have that resources available right now so i will be showing you how we can do that exercise and how we can perform that lab on my screen and you can have a look on that so i will be uh, covering this uh, today schedule in two parts so first i will be understanding you the concepts of the different topics and then second part i will be taking labs okay so i will try that uh, starting first two hours like i will be concentrating on the different topics and the next uh, part uh, i will be taking for the labs at the end like i will be taking a uh, few minutes for the guidance of the exam like how you can uh, register for the exam what are the different resource materials are there that can help you to study for azure 500 then uh, of course after the lab after this current uh, session if you want to perform the labs that i will be suggesting to you today uh, how you can do the hands on on so for that of course i will be helping you out how we can perform that lab where you can get out all these steps and all okay so let's start so i hope the agenda is clear to you all let me just close it start with my first study area so before starting with the today's uh, session so first i would like to ask from you guys like uh, how many of you already are done with easy 900 they know the fundamental or if you are not done with easy 500 if you have worked with azure portal to have little bit understanding the uh, like or i can say the basic understanding how to work with the azure portal or you have used the trial version of azure portal please put in the chat box it will really help me out to understand uh, you so that accordingly i will be taking the session ahead okay so lalit has posted that az 900 is done okay that's great okay Jennifer is done with easy nine hundred perfect. Who else? Okay, so Rajesh is done with easy nine hundred and easy four hundred perfect. Very good. Okay, that's great. Okay, so Sunil is saying uh, basic understanding you have on cloud, but no certification. No problem, Sunil. I hope you have a uh, little bit understanding of Azure portal. Is it? Okay, so Muthu Kumar is saying that is he expert? Okay, so you are done with expert also. That is expired. Okay, that's great. So, uh, Muthu, can you please type like uh, why you want to go with that easy five hundred? Like already you have easy five hundred that is expired, or how it is? No certification for cloud. Okay, Mayur, very good. Okay, so for you, Muthu Kumar, security is uh, is new something new for Azure. Okay, understood. Okay, so that's great. Means uh, so my crowd, you all are having a very good understanding. I can say about the basic is clear for you all to work with AZ five hundred. That is very good. Okay, awesome. So we are good to start. Just give me a minute.
Okay, so this is our first study area that is identity and access. So when we are working with AZ500, the very first focus area would be identity and access management. So when we take the name identity and access management, we can never forget Azure Active Directory, right? So some of you might have used Azure Active Directory or they may know about uh, Azure Active Directory. They must be having idea. So Azure Active Directory is what? It's the Microsoft Identity and Access Management solution. So here we will be focusing on Azure Active Directory. Then what is the fun of hybrid identity? What is hybrid identity? And when you're working with Azure or you are dealing with Azure Active Directory, how we can work uh, or we can create the hybrid infrastructure for managing the identities. Then we will be focusing what is identity protection. See, as Azure Active Directory is what for the identity and access management. So when you are dealing in when, with identities in your organization, right? So the main concern is what to protect those identities, correct? So how we can protect uh, protect these identities? What is the solution provided over there? So that we will be understanding. Now, as we have different identities, but every identity is having different roles, different privileges, right? Like in our organization, uh, some of you are normal users, some of maybe uh, supervisors, they may be manager, then maybe, uh, you know, senior managers. So as per the hierarchy, as per the role, the, the uh, designation they are having, the holding, Accordingly, they are having some accesses, correct? They are having some control in your organization. Same way, when it is on cloud, so the same concept will be applied in cloud too. So those who are having some uh, extra privileges, I must say, like some are who are administrator, some users who are handling a different kind of responsibility, who is responsible for working with a user's role, who is responsible for handling uh, creation of the users, someone who is handling how to work uh, or create the resources. So if I compare a normal identity or normal user with those users who are having the extra privileges, so don't you think I need to manage those identity more in compared to the normal user? Yes. So for that here, we have Privileged Identity Management Solution in Azure Active Directory. So we will focus more. What is Privileged Identity Management? How we can take the benefit of this solution when we are dealing with identity in Azure Active Directory. Then we will be heading towards Enterprise Governance. We will be discussing Application Security. And then last, we will be covering all the labs related to this module. Under Azure Active Directory, we will be focusing what is Azure Active Directory, what are the different features for the same, then Azure AD, and what is the difference between Azure AD domain services that is also known as AD DS. So when you're working with Azure AD, here we have different roles provided, okay? And these roles can be assigned to your users. So what are the different roles available? How we can assign these roles to our users? Then what is Azure AD domain services? How we can create users? How we can create groups? What is administrative units? And when a user is having an identity, of course, in cloud, so without password, we can never imagine an identity or using any cloud resources or work in cloud resources, right? But how we can work without a password, without remembering the password or without using the password? So that all we will be covering in current topic. So Azure Active Directory. See, when I'm saying Azure I, uh, uh, Active Directory is a identity and access management solution. Now, what is identity? Anyone who can just let me know what do you mean by identity? Can you please quickly type in the chat box? What do you mean by identity? Anyone? 
okay who okay but if for example you are in a in a organization okay now as from last 2 3 years most of us have switch to cloud right so when in we are in cloud imagine it is a virtual organization so when i'm talking about the virtual organization what do you mean my identity over there okay so mayur is saying user role okay any other uh, like guesses you want to do okay password anything else that you think can be a uh, identity recognition identity okay help identify a person or object okay who you are okay <laughs> okay any other guesses a resource okay you are much close uh, with the identity what i am asking about this is for nand kumar unique identity different user and its role of exposition okay who is authorized okay okay fine so when i am talking identity identity is what a user okay like for example you are sitting at home you are working from home okay now if you have to receive any mail or someone has to send you any mail or, or someone has to communicate something have to share any file how he can identify you yes how that person can identify you so your organization must have created an identity for you is it you must have like the day you join any organization immediately your identity is created am i right you all must be having an identity even if you are uh, some of you like might be a student so if you are working in any or you are you are a part of any college your college must have given you an identity correct so that is what that that is a identity a user is a identity now if i am saying only a user is identity no not only a user but yes when you are working in cloud you must be using a device for accessing the information correct you must be using a device that may be a mobile that may be a laptop that may be a tablet right so this is what this is again a identity how it is a identity because when you are working virtually my organization might have given me access to use the emails official document use the teams and all right but the device that i am using is it really the secure to access those uh documents and access those informations and all so for virtual environment virtual organization my devices is again a identity so that we can keep control on the devices what is being accessed by a user on that device do i have to allow my users to use that particular application on a particular device right so my device is again a identity now the third third identity that is your application so application is again a identity so what the uh, application you are using in your organization any legacy application that all again a part of identity i hope now identity part is clear so when you are in azure ad we deal with these kind of identity first we create identity and then we manage these identity in azure active directory now like from last 
hardly from last three four years we are working in cloud or most of our uh, have shifted to us uh, to the towards the cloud or organization they have shifted through the cloud so now there is no uh, restriction that you have to work from office we can work from anywhere from home from your client location right but there are different organization who are they are still working with the identity that is known as on premise identity on premise identity means the identities which are not on cloud these identities are managed on a on premise server okay but as now there are different benefit of switching ourselves to the cloud so why not like use these on premise identity to the cloud resources like if i am a organization where my all users who are on premise users they have to work uh, from office they have on premises identity management system we have that system but i have to take the advantage of cloud also right but i do not want to compromise with the security correct so i want to take of the of course there are different benefits of the on premise identity too on fire on premise infrastructure too like you said banks like where the high security modules are required they, they do not want jump like 100% towards the cloud they want to manage their resources identity on on premises too but for some purposes some benefits some advantages they want to go to the cloud also so in that case here we have azure active directory where you can set up a hybrid environment too. means you can make your users who are on premise users to work on cloud also so the resources which are on cloud the services which are on cloud you can use that okay so azure active directory when like if i only focus towards the cloud identities so here azure active directory where you have uh, the self service uh, reset password you can have a different like uh, authentication method over there you have more capabilities to manage the identities okay here you can uh, use a multi tenant cloud based environment too that is not possible on the on premise so that all advantages you get with the azure active directory so when i am talking about the hybrid identities here you have a tool that is known as ad connect that ad connect help you to connect your on premise identity with your azure active directory now your on premise ident identity is like here you have the on premise identities they can be connected with your azure active directory and take the advantage of your cloud resources and your saas services saas services means the cloud services for example your uh, office 65 services your teams your onedrive your uh, office applications and all word excel power like all the services now available in on cloud so in simple word you can say all office 65 services so your on premise users and this setup is known as hybrid setup this is known as hybrid identity now azure active directory we have understood now azure uh, apart from azure active directory we have one more solution that is active directory domain services so active directory domain services is a on premise identity management service okay now let's understand the difference between azure ad and addds so first the main advantage azure active directory is for cloud it's for your cloud identity and active directory domain services for your on premises i hope this funda is clear the cloud and on premises i hope it is clear to everyone
Okay. Mr. Neil has asked the question: What authentication protocol used for AAD as well as directory? I will clear all the doubts. I will let you know what is the difference between the Azure AD and AAD. I am just going to cover that. And the authentication protocol which is used with Azure Active Directory that is OAuth. Okay, so I hope it is clear. So here, yeah, it is written over there. The authentication method for Azure Active Directory it is OAuth. Okay. Now. When I'm talking about the uh, Azure AD and AD, so Azure AD is mainly a cloud based identity and access management service. And it is used for managing user identity and their access on applications and resources in the cloud. But on premise identity management, we have ADDS, that is Active Directory Domain Services. And it's an on premise directory services that is used for managing your identity and all within a Windows server based network. OK. Now Azure AD, it is designed for multi talent in, uh, tenant environment, but ADDS, it is designed for only a single organization and it is used to manage resources within that organization network only. Azure AD, it supports modern authentication protocol that, that I have just said it is both and open ID connect. Which is uh, you can say it is essential for your secure authentication and authorization in your cloud environment. But ADDS, there is a legacy authentication. It is primarily support your traditional authentication method like uh, Kerberos, and all and there is mainly that I uh, I will say that ID password kind of. So that is commonly used in your on premise environment that your the normal traditional uh, the authentication method which is used. So these two services are often used together so that I use the word that is what the hybrid setup. So when you want to go with a hybrid setup, like you are dealing with the on premise identity and the cloud identity, you want to take the advantage of both. You can surely opt for hybrid setup. I hope this part is clear. OK. Now when you're working with Azure Active Directory, you need to know what is the role. Hey, like role, you can say the responsibility that you are holding. What what are the different accesses you are having? So here in Azure, already there are different buildings role provided over there. The first one in a very important role that is a global administrator. So when you set up your uh, Microsoft 365 uh, account in your domain, the very first account which is created that is a domain administrator. In every organization, a global administrator hold all the responsibility A to J. OK, then you have security administrator. Security administrator is having all the responsibilities, having all the permissions related to with the security. He can manage all the security related features in your Microsoft 365, in your Azure Active Directory, in your security center, in your compliance or Office 365 security. Even he can manage the information protection also. Then you have a billing administrator role. Billing administrator is responsible for like purchasing your licenses, your uh, subscription, your support ticket, and all. And a global reader. Global reader, as the name itself is a reader, he can read all the settings. Sometimes, like it is not that you are able to do that, but it is required that you need to know. What are the different roles provided? What is the setting over there? So for that need, for that requirement, you have a global reader role. Now Active Directory, Azure Active Directory Domain Services, Azure ADDS. This is provide this provide basically to manage your uh, manage domain services such as your 
uh, your domain join your group policies and all so you basically use these domain services without a need to deploy and manage this azure adds its managed domain it let you run your legacy application in the cloud and that can't use modern authentication method or where you don't want your directory lookup to always go back on it on premise adds environment so you can lift and shift those legacy application from your on premise environment into your managed domain without even needing to manage your adds environment in the cloud Was discussing about the identity. So in your identity, the first identity that is what the user. Okay. So in your Azure Active Directory, you can create users. These users will be the part of your organization. So any organization, whenever anyone join the organization, a uh, identity is provided to them. And for creating the identity, you need to add the user. You can add the user. You can provide any role to that user. You can make him an admin. Any administrator role you can give. Okay. So here, once a user is added, you can assign any role to that particular user. So there are different built-in roles. The role that I have just discussed. Apart from that, there are different roles which is available in your Azure Active Directory. You can assign these role as per the requirement to any of the user. Here, even you have option to add bulk user. Means not one by one, but yes, if you have data in bulk, you have 300 user, 500 user. So how long you will be adding one by one? So better you can go with a bulk operation, and you can add all those user in bulk. You can add. Whenever it is not required, or any user who is any identity who is leaving your organization, you can delete that user. So all the user-related management you can do with the Azure Active Directory. Sometimes, like in our organization, only a single, you know, we cannot do all the work individually, right? We have to work in departments. We have to work in groups. Sometimes any assignment is provided to us. Sometimes any project is assigned to us. So in that case, we are working as a team. We are working as a group. That whole group may have a uh, common responsibility, common rules to be shared, right? Or we can say a common goal to be achieved. In that case, we need to create group. So is a no Azure Active Directory. We can create uh, groups as per requirement. So when a group is created, it is easy for us to manage that. Like for example, I want uh, all the users who are a part of uh, security department. They all must be given this particular role, or this access should be provided. So in place of providing that role one by one better what i will be do i will be making a group and i will assign that permission or role to that group directly so in a future when a user is added to that group automatically that access is provided to that user okay so this is how we can create the group you can create there are different uh, options available to create the group like a different types, I can say, uh, like a, what type of uh, group you want to create. Is it for a security purpose or what? So when I will be covering the lab, I will be showing you how you can create a group. Then we have administrative unit. Administrative unit, you can say it's a bucket. OK, or it's a bundle. Where, like, uh, you can say uh, that is a container, like for your all other Azure Active Directory resources. For example, I am creating an administrative unit, and that can contain uh, any users, groups, or devices. Now, the purpose of 
creating that administrative unit is that. For example, um, I have a user, I have an admin, and I have given him role uh, user administrator. Okay. Now, that user administrator would be able to control all the users, or I must say, uh, would be able to manage all the users who are a part of my organization. Am I correct? When I am having any user administrator in my organization, he would be able to control all the users. Correct? But I do not want so. I want that user administrator only should be able to control Maharashtra region. Or I want users should only be able to manage only daily users or that particular unit. In that case, I will be creating any administrative unit. I will be adding the department. I will be adding users. I will be adding uh, groups. I will be adding my resources application to that administrative unit. And there I will assign an admin. And I will provide him user administrator role. Now I will be controlling the access of that user administrator. Now only he can manage that particular unit. Like only the Maharashtra user, Delhi user or any particular region. That's why we work with administrative unit. Now, let me ask you one question. How many of you are good in remembering password? Like, I will say I am very bad <laughs> because I, like, you know, I forget password easily. Like, for example, I have created a password for any particular uh, service on a website. You know, when for one month, if I'm not using that, after one month when I'm trying to log in, I forget. Does it happen to you too? Or you remembering the password or for every uh, services, every portal, you are having different passwords. How is it? I'm not uh, able to get it like you are good in remembering password <laughs> or what you are you are typing some of you are typing yes so who are typing yes I will get it like you are good in pa in remembering password <laughs> okay so you all are like me who forget the password easily <laughs> okay so you know you know we want that there should be security okay and uh, what what we actually do when we have to use a password now we try to use that password that is easy to remember correct that may be our uh, contact number that may be our name or uh, that may be a family member name or, or the birth date and all these are the common uh, terms that we use to remember the password uh, right so but what happened, you know, nowadays the these services, the cloud services are very smarter. Huh? They know that you are using any password that is that is like somehow related with your name or the password that you have already used the last time somewhere. For they will restrict you to use that password. And nowadays, you know, there is a restriction that you have to use at least the eight character password. It should be uh, upper letter or it should be lower case or it should be uh, one number, one uh, upper letter, something kind of that. So it is so tricky, you know, that to set the password and again when setting the password and once even we are able to set a very difficult password. <laughs> but as it is difficult, it is very, you know, difficult to remember that. And it is easy to forget that. So that is a very common problem with everyone. So now here, when you are working with Azure Active Directory, first, the very good thing is that you have password-less authentication. So you can easily set up. So here, Microsoft says that when you are setting up the password method, you can opt for only the username and password, user uh, uh, ID and password. But that is what the bad passwords, like the bad 
password methodology i will say if you are using password with a second authentication method like for example some organization they are forcing you to put the password but along with that you have to authenticate with an application also like microsoft authenticator app or along with your password you have to use any code or the otp your text message right so they are making it difficult for us a, a authentication process why because when it would be difficult it would be difficult to hack also but the perfect method for the safe authentication is password less authentication because no user wants to remember the password they do not want even they want to keep a easy password to remember or if it is a tricky and a complex one they forget so better to use passwordless authentication in this passwordless authentication you can log in without using password when it is a passwordless authentication it increases your security and gives you the experience so here you have different methods that can be used where you do not need to use the password like the these methods are pseudo security key that is for uh, the uh, like mostly not for the mobile but for the windows users for that we can set up this pseudo to security uh, if you go to bank and all there these type of security is used uh, for the authentication then you have microsoft authenticator app that can be used where every time when you are trying to log into any services without even the password uh, a notification will be sent to your microsoft authenticator app so when you have to log in by your thumbprint then only you would be able to use that services that is for the microsoft authenticator when you of a message will be sent to you over the phone you have to put that password and then you would be able to use the services and then you have a temporary access pass also so these all are the services the methods that you can use to go and take the advantage for passwordless authentication this is again and the need like if you are a, a security engineer in your organization you have to observe that yes this is really the requirement of my organization where i have to set up the passwordless authentication now it's time to showcase you uh, how this azure active directory environments looks like and how we can start working with azure active directory so for that let me take you to the azure portal as if you have any doubt any queries please keep on putting on the chat Okay, so it's my Azure portal. So you can uh, create a Azure uh, trial account. All these are defined as Azure. I will be covering that part soon. If I will be coming uh, to that topic. Right now, I am not uh, discussing about the policy. I am only taking you to the tour of Azure AD. when i will covering that i am part i will be explaining the same okay so when you are in azure portal if this azure active directory is there you can directly click on that or if it is not visible over there you can type azure active directory
in azure active directory so when you are working with even uh, microsoft 365 services those uh, like uh, who do not have azure portal see azure portal you know you can create a trial account but that is only available for one month and only with a email id you can create it once only so twice like if a next next time again you want to create a trial account it will not allow you to do so but if you want to practice for your azure active directory i will be sharing a link with you you can try that uh, that is for microsoft 365 developer uh, account and with your microsoft 365 developer you again get azure active directory and you can explore the feature of azure active directory so i will be sharing that link just give me a minute um I think Ashish has already shared. Thank you, Ashish. I have shared the same link. Okay, so you can use uh, this link. Just click on Join now, and it will create you uh, a sandbox environment for you, where already some users will be created. But you can try creating new users and all, and you can explore the capability of Azure Active Directory over there. Okay, so when you are in Azure Active Directory, first you can uh, take the overview of your organization, your primary domain, how many users are there, how many groups are there. If you have any applications, so you can take the data for the same, and if any devices which is enrolled, and that can be viewed over there. Here, when I will click on uh, users, so here you can get the list of all the users which is added in your organization in your Azure Active Directory. So right now I'm having six users over there. So for example, I want to take the detail of any user. Just click on that. So here you can see all the details are there. If he is a part of any group, any assigned role, like for example, I wanted to see how many roles are assigned to him. So I will click on that. So these all are the rules assigned to him. This is the administrative unit. Like if your user is a part of any administrative unit, that will be listed over there. The administrative unit that I have just explained you. The groups. If any application is assigned, what license is assigned to him? <laughs> right now there is no license assigned. That's why it is. But if you want to assign any license, you can click on assignment. <clears throat> and these are Azure role assignment. See, there are two types of roles available. The first one is Azure Active Directory roles, and then Azure role. Okay. So Azure roles are provided to manage the Azure resources and Azure AD roles are to manage the Azure Active Directory to manage the identities and all. OK, so there is a difference between Azure role and Azure AD roles. 
like here when it is a azure role assignment you can see this is a contributor role for any resource group user administrator role this is the for the subscription owner contributor and reader role if you want to check the audit log or the sign in log of any user like how many time he has sign in when he has sign in that all data you can check over there now we'll come back and i will show you the like groups so here you can get the detail of all the groups happen yeah so right now there is only one group that is added over there so click on that so right now there is only one user who is a part of this group he is a member of the group there is no owner i can see for the group again any role or assignment roles and administrators for this group you can click on that if is there is any azure role assignment that you can check over there okay sandbox the sandbox is you can say a kind of a dummy environment okay the uh, why the sandbox is created because for practice or for understanding the capabilities of that environment you need to have some user okay so this sandbox is provided to you a dummy environment is provided to you with the set of few users so you can directly use that users for the different labs okay i hope it is clear to you sunil Like, see, if any uh, raw uh, environment will be given to you as you are a new, so it would be difficult for you to how to start working with. So that's why this Microsoft is giving you that uh, sandbox environment. So the link that I have shared, if you will click on that, when the finally a dummy account will be created for you, you will be by default the admin, and uh, when you will be logging on the same, you will notice that there are some users. Uh, are already provided over there okay so coming back to my ppt so again i will uh, come back to that azure portal and i will show you how we can create the users how we can create the groups even i will be showing you how we can use the powershell command or the bash command for creating a uh the users like uh, what are the different methods i will say so there are three method i will be using for creating users and groups and then i will be showing you how we can provide them any role or uh, how we can make them a admin or if there is any group for that how to work with that so that i i will be covering okay now here in this part we are focusing toward the hybrid identity i have already explained little bit about the hybrid identity like what is hybrid identities so in this part i will be showcasing you what is uh, azure ad connect how we can uh, synchronize the identities with the same what are the different authentication methods so we will be understanding three different authentication method which is available over there when you are setting up the hybrid identity then there is a uh, authentication decision tree and what is password right back now as i already explain you what is on premise identity and what is cloud identity just to refresh that so cloud identity which is created on cloud and managed on cloud 
like when you create a office 365 account like as i have just shared you the link of uh, developer account where you will be getting a sandbox so there is again you will get some set of users and these users of course are identity so these identities you will wherever you will open your account you will get these identity it may be you can open it in on your official laptop uh, you can use it to uh, your uh, at your home at your office anywhere so when you are getting that identity you are managing that identity you are creating a user there is no place restriction it means that is what cloud it is just something like your gmail services your facebook account your uh, netflix account and all so that is what everything is in cloud wherever you want to log into that services you can log in same way identity but as i said when there is a on premises server and when you have identities that is saved on that server and you have to manage your on premises identities with the help of that server only so that is on premise identity now when you are managing or storing your uh, identities on premises of course you cannot you know you cannot use that cloud services but as nowadays we all are working from cloud and there are different different advantages of the cloud services correct so organization who are dealing earlier with the on premise identities now again they want to take the advantage of the cloud but 100% they do not want to ship themselves from on premise to cloud then what to do how we can take that so then there is a solution from microsoft they have azure ad connect azure ad connect you can say it's a tool and this tool help you to create a connection between your cloud and your on premise active directory as i said like when i am working with a azure portal or i am having office 365 account i will be getting automatically my azure active directory to manage my users manage my identity to so this azure ad connect connect create a bridge i will say create a bridge between your on premise active directory where your on premise users are there and the connection between the bridge between your cloud identity that is your azure active directory now the benefit is that like here you have on premise user they can use all the cloud services now this setup is known as hybrid setup now when you are using azure ad connect it just synchronize your account okay so you can uh, use azure ad connect that is tool again can be easily downloaded it is freely available you can use that and you can synchronize your cloud identity with your on premise identity and user have to use only a single password though he is using your cloud services or on premise service there is not like that for cloud a different password or for uh, on premise a different password no the same identity same password he is using for both the services on premise or cloud i hope it is clear to everyone if any doubt you can put it in the chat box okay now coming to authentication option you must be wondering uh, like when we are working with uh, cloud or when the uh, identities are on premises and there is a synchronization between them so what about the authentication how a user is able to use the same identity and password on both the places so for that here there are three main methods that you can use for the authentication when there is a hybrid setup <coughs> sorry so there are three main methods that is password hash synchronization second that is pass through authentication and the third one that is adfs 
that is active directory federation services federation servers sorry the password hash synchronization it synchronize a user password from on premise active directory to your cloud based azure ad now here when you sign into azure ad services using your on premise password here it it improves your productivity of your users and reduce your help desk cost why because the password hashes are synchronized that's why the name is password hash synchronization and then the main thing is that your passwords are stored and managed in the cloud and again authentication is handled in the cloud so when you have on premise or when you have your cloud your identity authentication it will be verified at cloud this is password hash synchronization the pass through authentication here authentication requests are sent from azure ad services to your on premise agent i hope you are getting the difference here when it is a password hash synchronization this authentication is what it is on a cloud but here from cloud it is sent to on premises okay now active directory for the here the active directory is used for the password verification so there is no passwords are stored in cloud so user enter their password when sign in password verification is done only on on premises only now coming to adfs now it enable your identity federation which allow you from one organization to access resources in another organization without needing any separate authentication so when a user authenticates this is basically a server it is a federation server because of that federation server your authentication method is done i hope all three authentication method is clear password hash where identity is managed in cloud pass through identity is managed on, or authentication is managed sorry uh, i am i my bad uh, i am using the word identity it's not identity authentication the so password hash authentication is done on cloud <clears throat> password is stored on cloud here password is stored on on premises and authentication is performed on premises so request is sent from cloud to on premises and here this authentication process is done via federation server any question okay now when i'm saying the password is synchronized either the request is sent from cloud to the on premise or request is sent from on premise to cloud means in both the cases user is using of course the same password same identity but for example any user wants to change the password what about that my password is stored in cloud he changed the password in cloud what about the on premise services then or if my password is stored on premises and i change the password how it will be synchronized then on, on cloud services so this terminology is known as password right back so this password right back this basically uh, uh it's it is having any cloud based password reset uh, utility it is great but most company you know still have your on premise active directory where their user access so here the password right back is a feature that enable with active uh, azure active directory connect that allow your password changes in the cloud to be written back on your on premise directory and it happens in real time so the benefit is that when your password is changed immediately it is right back so there is no confusion whenever the password is changed it is reset it will be right back 
So that screen that you are uh, looking here, this is the feature of AD Connect, Azure AD Connect. So when you are setting up the hybrid setup, you get this option. Make sure this is clicked. When it is clicked, the password will be right back. Once it is set up, it will be written back. So now, as I said, now we were discussing about the identity. We have covered what is identities. So we have got to know there are different uh, two type of identities, cloud identities, on-premise identities, and hybrid identity. So the cloud identities, which is created and managed on cloud, on-premise identities, which is created and managed on on-premises, hybrid identities, which where your have where your on-premise and cloud identities are synchronized. Okay, so there is a connection like on-premise users can take the advantage of the cloud services. Now, identities we have discussed. We have got to know that, okay, this is how uh, users are managed. A user is added or the group is added. But what about the protection of those identities? When a user is created, it is something like you have uh, you have just brought a, a laptop or you have just bought a mobile. The time we purchase any device, we think about the security, the protection. For example, I have just bought a new mobile. What will be the first thing you do? Anyone? When you buy a new laptop or a new mobile, what the first thing you do? Anyone? Oh, nobody is uh, answering me. See, guys, please uh, answering me. Like, if you will be interacting with me, it will be easy for me to talk with you. Yes, setting up a password. Very good. Setting up a password. Back cover. Okay, very good. Account setup. Screen guard. Right? Stretch card. <laughs> okay. Or if it is a you know a laptop, so what we do, we have antivirus. We have again the screen, uh, uh, the protection for the screen, uh, the laptop cover and all. Okay, we set up the password. Very good. Huh? Thank you for the answers. So why I have asked this question? See, whenever we have created any resources in an organization, we think the next thing is that we of course think about the security. Correct. The so same way for the identity. Once the identity is created, we have to think about the protection of that identity. So as a security engineer, whenever you are dealing with the identity, you have to plan the strategies for the identity protection. So in this part, we are going to discuss what is identity protection solution available in Azure Active Directory. What is what do you mean by risk event? What is the meaning of uh, user risk policy? What is sign in risk policy? What is Azure multi-factor authentication concept? How we can deal with the conditional access policy? What are the different conditions available there? And when we are providing any accesses to any user, how we can review that? So the very first thing identity protection features. So when you are in Azure Active Directory and dealing with the protection of your identity, here you have three main policy. This is a very important question that you can uh, uh, get in your exam. That is about the uh, identity uh, protection policy. So the first policy that is user risk policy. User risk policy is what? When you have any user risk, user risk is what? Like something uh, your identity is compromised. Okay. In that case, whenever there is any user risk, you detect that yes, if there is any user risk, you can set up a policy. Immediately, user will be required password change. Got it? Second policy, that is sign in risk policy. 
whenever any sign in risk is detected user is required a multi factor authentication sign in risk may be for example uh, impossible travel means you know that for example i am in mumbai okay and i i was just like in in my office and i was working with my colleague but after few hours i got to know that yes my colleague he she has signed from uh, america or from us is it possible how it is possible it means someone else is trying to use his identity so this kind of risk is most it is unknown travel impossible travel and all so that is known as sign in risk means someone else maybe your password is uh, you know leaked and also these type of risk can be controlled by using these two policies the main thing you have to remember when user risk is detected user will be required password change when the sign in risk is detected user required multi factor authentication and the third policy that is multi factor authentication means you may users or set of users they require multi factor authentication means i have few set of users i want their identity should not be compromised so i want to set up multi factor authentication for them i may set it uh, for my uh, group for from for a particular group who deals with some in role or they are administrators they are are part of any particular department so for whole department i want to set up the multi factor authentication see you can set up multi factor authentication for all your user but it may be that i may not uh, require multi factor authentication for all my user why to do that see generally as a normal user you know it's sometimes it is you know it is it is something like uh looks very uh, boring and kind of like put a different password putting the you know, one password getting the otp then searching for that otp and put that sometimes it affects our uh, productivity also every time you are engaged with the passwords and all so for that i we normally organization do not want that every organize every user should be having multi factor authentication no only few users or set of user or group of users should be having multi factor authentication policy so here you can protect those identities who are having a specific role a specific access specific responsibilities so for them you just want to protect them and set up multi factor authentication for them now when i am talking about the risk policy <clears throat> so there are there may be any risk event so risk events like uh, uh, as as i said the risk is about the uh, your identity is compromised so in that case there may be any leak the credential it may be your password is known to someone who might have like when you are typing he had got to know that okay what type of uh, what password you are typing that may be any impossible travel from any a typical location the example i have just given to you or sign in from any unfamiliar location that you know that my uh, employees can never go to that location can never tra ne ne never travel to that location or you are sign in from any infected device infected device means any devices where uh, there is any virus or someone is tracking to you from that devices or sign in from any ip address which is suspicious activities so these all are the events when this events occurs you can set up the policies and you will get to know that okay it is high risk users any user with a medium risk any unprotected risk key signing or any legal only legacy authentication and all so this is how you can get to know about these risky events so when you are setting up the user risk policy you can set up the risk level when you want to be notified so that you can set up now when you said got to know that okay this type of risk is detected what do you want to do next do you want to block the access immediately do not want to take any chance or you want to provide access <clears throat> 
but you want that okay i want to provide access but user need to change the password so this is how you can set up your user policy user risk policy and the sign in risk policy same way in the sign in risk policy you can again set up the risk level high medium low whatever and as per that risk is detected you want to block the access or allow but in this policies you can when you are allowing the access require multi factor authentication you just tick mark on it and the user will provide a multi factor authentication and he can prove his identity and authentication now the third one the third policy that i was talking about that was the multi factor authentication means as i want that i have a user who frequently uh, deal with the admin role he uh, uh, have he is having a uh, few uh, privileges right so i want that his identity should not be compromised i do not want to take the risk so for that user i want to set up a multi factor authentication multi factor authentication is nothing it's a two step verification where you are giving a extra set of verification you are uh, authenticating yourself with a second step for example like for your bank account or sometime for your credit card and all you have to provide the otp okay or for bank website you put the id and password and along with that you have to put additional factor of authentication so that is known as multi factor authentication along with your user id and password i can have uh, i can have different methods like a microsoft authenticator app text message or a, a, an authentication call and all so that can be used to set up the multi factor authentication as a security engineer now you can set up which additional method you want to set as a mfa like i may set a text message so as i am trying to log in or my user is trying to log in he will get a text message on his registered phone number and he has to authenticate himself by putting that text message along with the user id and password so how you can enable the multi factor authentication you have different options first you can enable multi factor authentication by going to a particular user and set it up for that particular user or you can go into the multi factor authentication setting where you can in a bulk you can uh, enable the multi factor authentication and the third option is what when you are setting up the identity protection setting there you get the multi factor authentic like the this way uh yeah this way this is under identity protection feature so you have three options to go with a multi factor authentication these all are the mfa setting that you can check it out under mfa setting related with the account lockout like the temporary lock account if too many denied authentication attempts occur like uh, you want uh, okay that like 10 times if the wrong uh, attempt is there you can turn late so this is how like you want to block or unblock the user for example a uh, user id and password is correct but the additional password that the text message that i am putting this is wrong so when it is wrong immediately i want to block or any flawed alert like something uh, you might have tried your uh, debit card or credit card or your uh, your bank account when i am using my application my bank application on my mobile you know sometimes uh, by mistake i put the wrong password so immediately a notification is that a wrong password is put is it like you who is trying to access and all only the two attempt is left only the three attempt is something so that all setting you can do over there and for example like the three attempt is done a my account is blocked so that all setting related with the multi factor authentication you can perform over there now 
for example i want to provide access to any user okay uh, like for example i want uh, let me come back to you okay for example any user for example uh, divya is there okay now i want to provide access to divya that now he can uh, uh, he can use only the password or he can only uh, use the for okay the id password let's keep like that but i want whenever divya is using a particular application for example whenever divya is using teams or whenever he is using one drive he need to give the additional factor of authentication then what is this i am putting a condition that when divya is trying to use any particular application then he has to put the multi factor authentication when a user is trying to sign in from any unknown location he should be blocked so when i am setting any condition i am setting a policy with a condition like user is logged in from any particular location or user is a part of of a security group or for for uh, nikhil for example nikhil ga acquired is there for example nikhil is trying to log in he should go for the multi factor authentication so whenever there is any condition while uh, for any group for any user for any application for any location so these type of policies are known as conditional access policy uh not the reverse proxy that is a different concept but here the conditional access policy is something like i am giving you access but with a condition right like i am giving you multi factor authentication with a condition are you getting my point i hope it is clear so conditional access policy is what whenever there is any condition so actually what happen this may be as per the user or location any device like for example user is trying to log in from any suspicious uh, ip suspicious device what do you want next do you want to allow access do you want to block access or you want user should be prove himself that yes he is a authorized user by uh, putting the multi factor authentication so these are the signals that you can set up that is real time risk devices user location or any application any of the criteria is fulfilled now you have to put the condition that this is the condition is set up now what next if how you are going to verify directly even you are allowing him you are blocking him or multi factor authentication okay when the multi factor authentication is done user would be able to use the application or data that he want to use if is allowed to access directly he would be able to use apps and data but if the access is blocked like if this particular user is trying to log in from any particular device or for any particular application he should be immediately blocked okay now one suggestion from my side when you are testing this conditional access policy never use a block okay it it actually block the user so don't test for the block access policy always try it or test it for allow access or for the multi factor authentication now the conditions condition may be user group like i just said user is from the finance group from the hr group from the security group like that any particular cloud application any device state any location or the ip range you can set up or uh, any client application or any sign in risk like the abi uh, like we have just discussed about the identity protection where you have the sign in risk so you can put that again as a condition that whenever there is a sign in risk what action you want to take place either you want to allow block or import the mfa now when we are providing accesses 
to any group or to any user for any particular resource or any application or you are putting condition for accessing any resources in both the cases anyhow at the end access is given to any user or a group but don't you think is it is important to review that access that how that access is being used is there any disadvantages is there is any misuse or whether that access is really required or not so for that purpose you need to perform the access reviews what is for example any organization or i will say like you all must be user of any organization okay but don't you think you all have a life cycle in your organization right for example you some of you might be working from last 5 year 10 year or some of you who are new to any organization when we immediately join any organization we are when we are totally new to any organization then a particular you know position is given to you a designation is assigned to you some roles and responsibilities provided to you but what do you think from last one year last 5 year from last 10 year are you all performing the same role and responsibility in your organization are you all having the same designation in your organization what do you think can you please put yes or no in the chat box or it is changed like some of you might be promoted or for example not promoted but yes now you are handling a different set of rules a uh, uh, different set of responsibility or the roles is it like that so dira is is saying that will change of course correct so it will be changed for everyone because you know we we all are human being we cannot perform the same work like from last 5 year even for one year if someone says that you have to go komal you have to do this work uh, and continually just doing these things also or even if i am for example i am a trainer and i am uh, uh, training uh, giving you training for easy 500 if for a whole year i have to train the training for easy 500 oh my god i will get bored i want to improve myself it's not that that particular work is bored no i want to improve myself i want to go to the expert level certification i want to do more about uh, azure certification or or azure technologies what new in the market i want to update myself i want to upgrade myself i want to go for the growth i want a growth in the organization right so for that purpose that need every identity go through in a circle of a life cycle it may be you join or after some time you resign and you leave the company you are promoted you are uh, changed to one department to another department or your responsibility is changed right so in any case whatever the access is given to you it should be revoked also if you are leaving the organization whatever the access or role i have given to you i have to take back if you are promoted whatever your previous roles and responsibility now that is not in use why should we provide it to you what it so in that case it is very important to perform the access review as you would be a, a security engineer it is your responsibility to take care about the accesses which is provided to them it is something like any privileges that you have given to someone once the time is over you have to take it back it should not be uh, nobody should be take that disadvantage for the same right so for that purpose we perform review it may be like for example uh, like for example uh, i was performing a consulting assignment for any uh, there was any us company and i was doing work for them so that was a six month project around yeah six month project so for that uh, they need to add me as a user uh, in their organization so that i can work uh, with them like i had to uh, create a internal uh, website for their organization 
and i have to uh, set up the user policies i have to give them the role and all so i was provided a role and responsibility in that organization but as immediately the project was over <clears throat> for the 15 days time was given like if like when we perform the handover of course the client may have any doubt they may have some uh, problems issues and all so for that that 15 days additional time period was given and then we got the mail that after 3 days your account will be over or it will be closed okay then what happened after 3 days my account was and my accesses was closed it was deleted so after 3 days i could not log into their account why it happened because when i was working for them they had to give me that permissions they had to give me that accesses i was given the admin role i was handling their active directory and all but once that my role is over my responsibility is over now that role is no more needed so immediately they have to get back that role and accesses from me because it may be that once the responsibility is over i can go and do something i can uh, remove something or i can add something i can do any mischievous activity that can be done so it is very important that sometime we have to add any user as a guest user or for three month period or for a particular project requirement or it may be that uh, whenever it is required for something uh, for example uh i want to add any user for any uh, project help but only whenever there is needed it's not that whenever he is login and he is able to uh, use that access no it's not like that for example uh monday today is uh, 19 21 is monday now monday he is uh, he has joined the office and now he need to work with that access then he need to ask for the same though that access is given now the though that uh, role is given to him but without permission he cannot use that you know sometime it happens that something is uh, given to us it is something like uh, you know we uh, in our at our home like we give something to our kids or we have something at uh, at home like we have chocolates in the uh, freezer and all this but we ask our children do not take that without my permission it is something like that that is there with you but you cannot use without my permission okay so that all comes under one umbrella that is access review so you can control the access and you can review that access you have to take care that yes that access is not being uh, it is not be uh, no disadvantage should be taken of that access which is provided okay so one thing i just wanted to clear that uh, access review this is a part of premium p2 license so when you are working with azure active directory make sure you must be having p2 license to take the advantage of uh, this feature next is privileged identity management i will uh, cover this topic after the break so we'll take a we will resume back and uh, we will cover the another topic so let's take a break for 15 minutes let me on the timer
Hi guys, Chaitali here again. Uh, till the time we are on break, make sure you get your batch activated. I have shared the steps and the URL in the chat box. So get your batch activated for AZ500. Under this batch, you will get a study material like overview of the modules and learning path for the AZ500. So make sure you get your batch activated. If you're facing any problem while the redemption of the batch, uh, do let me know in the chat box so I can help you out with the same. Thank you, Rajesh, for updating. Guys, make sure you get your batch activated as we are on break. It will hardly take few minutes, so make sure you follow these steps and get your URL redeemed and get the batch activated. Great guys, thanks for posting your badges in the chat box.
I hope you all are able to get your batch activated. Guys, if you are facing any issue, you can write in the chat box. I'm there to help you out. If you're facing any issue while redemption, do let me know in the chat box. Uh, those who are new to this process, you just have to make sure you get your profile on Microsoft Learn. You have to open your profile on Microsoft Learn. Like this, you have to sign in, uh, mention your details, complete your details, and get your profile created. Once it is done, you just have to click on the URL which has been posted in the chat box with the steps, and you have to click on the redeem button. So you will get the badge as you can see on the screen under achievements module and courses. I will see my I can see my badge. Easy 500. Uh, yes, and you just have to click on view profile uh, on your profile. You can see the achievement under that you will get the 
module uh, module courses and more option there you can see your badge Hello everyone, I'm back. I hope you all are there with me. Uh, Chaitanya, are you explaining something? Or should I start? Oh, uh, you can go ahead ma'am. I'm done with okay. my part. Okay, guys, so what I am planning uh, before heading to the next topic, I just wanted to do a lap. For example, I've discussed about the uh, users' identities, rules, and all. And uh, we have already discussed about the policies like uh, user risk policies, sign in risk policies, and, and we have discussed multi factor authentication. So let's the first uh, do the labs for the same, and then we will be heading towards the next part that is privilege identity management. Okay, so for that, we have to go to my other portal. <clears throat> Okay, so now here, for example, you are a security administrator of your organization, and now uh, you have to, uh, you have, uh, you are being, uh, you are asked to create uh, users and groups. So now here in this exercise, what we will be doing, we will be creating users and groups. We will be adding these users to that particular group. Then uh, we will be assigning a role. Uh, to the particular group. Okay, so this is what we are going to do in this exercise. So here for adding the user or creating the group, we will be doing, uh, uh, we will be using three ways. So first, I will be adding users and group by using the Azure portal directly. In our second method, I will be using PowerShell. I will be using PowerShell command to create the users and group. And then I uh, will be using Azure CLI, that is command line interface, for creating the group and user. And the last, we will be using again uh, Azure portal, where we will be adding the Azure rule to the group. Okay, so let's start. So in our first exercise, let me first show you the diagram that I am going to use. Uh, Okay. Okay. So by this diagram, you can understand what exercise we are going to do. So first, uh, we will be using Azure AD tenant. So we have that Azure AD tenant ready with us. So in our first exercise, as you can see, we can uh, we are going to create a user. Uh, don't uh, stick to the name that I, we may use a different name. Then we will be creating a group that will be for senior admins, and we will uh, assign a membership of this group to this user. So this exercise we will be doing by directly using Azure portal. In our next exercise, we will be creating a user cloud using by using the PowerShell that I was talking about. 
and i will make this user part of this group that will be junior admin group and our third exercise where i will be using cli where i will be creating a group uh, that is service desk management uh, membership right and uh, here uh, the user i will be adding to this group and finally i will be uh, adding this role much that will be machine virtual machine contributor role to this particular group okay and for that we need a resource group that again we will be creating using azure data so let's start so first directly i'm using azure active directory for adding the user so here to add a new user just click on users click on new user now here when you will click on new user you will get two option create new user or invite any external user so if you want to uh, collaborate with any other user who is a part of other organization you can use this option then uh, you can directly use that email id of that particular user and you can send him invite and by using that invite link that user will be added to your organization as a guest user okay here you get the option to download the user like whatever the users are added you can download these users list this is for the bulk operation that i was talking about like not by going one by one you have n number of user like uh, uh, multiple user like 40 100 50 and so on for that you can perform the bulk operation to create the user and here you have option to go for per user mfa that i will be coming back to this option later so let me first create a new user by using this option create new user so here user principal name this is nothing just the email id that will be created for that user so for example i am using user 1 okay and here this is the domain which is uh, the default domain i have got by this account so same way if you are using microsoft 365 account you will be getting a default domain that will be on microsoft.com and before that you have to use any domain that should be the unique domain but this cannot be considered as a a uh, custom domain okay so for that domain they need to purchase a domain like uh, gmail uh, facebook like uh, synergetic kind of so this is just the uh, domain like uh, that is a template that is a domain that is the default domain that i'm using now that display name again i will be using user1 and here is the password so for password uh you can use the auto generated password option or if you want you can type a password here you can see the password should be a minimum of character 8 there should be lower case upper case number and symbol so make sure your password must be having all these criteria happen Okay, so it is saying actually I am using the normal password P S S W O R D. So that's why it is saying it's very weak and common. So let me try another one. Is <laughs> again not easy password. It is accepting. Okay, now it's fine. 
So here this option is by default click that is account enable means directly if once it is created user would be able to use this. Email ID. So once it is done, you can click on uh, review and create. So user added successfully. I have got the notification. Now you can check it out over there. Let me just refresh. If that name is not listed, it you can refresh. So now you can check that user is added over there. So now let me add a group. So for that, I will go back. Oh, sorry. So this time I will click on groups. Here, just click on new group. Is asking me what type of group you. So here I'm having two options security and Microsoft 365. Now Microsoft 365 is what when your Azure portal is linked with Microsoft 365, you can use this type. So when you will be using this type now see. Right now I'm having option group type, group name, group description. For example, I'm selecting for Microsoft 365. Now you can see I have an extra option that is group email address. So this is what the main difference between the security group and the Microsoft 365 group. Security group doesn't have the email ID. But a user is always like when a group is added as a security group. Security group never have a email ID because it is assumed that a security group uh, should not be having an email ID because they should not be. So here right now as it, we are creating it for the senior admins, so it should always be a security group. So I have I'm giving name. Senior admins. You can keep it blank group description. If you want to give, you can give. And the members start membership type is assigned. If you want to add any owner or member, you can add here. But as we have to add the user that I have just created, that user as a member. So here I will be. Adding member. So just find out the user that you have created. This is the user I am selecting. The user and so one member selected. Same way I can add owner. So I will use the same user and I will add that as a member. So here select it. And create. So let me refresh it. So this group is added. Let me click on it. In an overview, it is showing me that I have one user added. I have one owner and total one member. So this was one way to create user and group and to add a user as a member or a owner to any group. So this was the one way I'm directly. I have just directly used the Azure portal. Now the second method I am going to use that is our PowerShell command. So for PowerShell. See here in this blue bar, just look at this option. This is for Cloud Shell. 
when you will click on it, it this window will be open now here you will get two option bash and powershell make sure the powershell is selecting uh, is selected when you are using the powershell command now you can see this powershell uh, i can read over there so you are in powershell right now so now we can start so here i have to add a user so for that i need to use the command powershell command for the same so i have already written powershell command here so i will be using this first command this first command will create a profile a password profile for the user that i'm going to create so i'm just simply pasting it over there okay so this is creating a password profile is equal to new object type is what microsoft open azure ad model password profile press enter now here i have to first set the password if you want uh, i can change the password if i want if it is okay i can continue next i need to connect with azure ad for that i am putting the command connect azure ad now i am connected to azure active directory now the next command i am using to track the domain name as you have just observed when i was using uh, when i was using azure ad to directly connect a user that time i had to give uh, that domain name you know that was the default domain name was over there i just have to give the name of the user same way here first this command is going to track the current domain any verified domain and it will be shifted this verified domain name will be shifted with the, with the domain name so my this get azure ad tenant detail it is collecting my tenant detail and passing to domain name next finally i have to give the detail of the user that i want to add so here i am going to use the command that is new azure ad user this would be the display name if you want uh, sorry i want to change the name of that user make it uh, admin admin 1 and here i will use that this uh, this is what the display name i have given now the user principal name that is for email id it will be used and here again i will be using admin 1 at the rate domain name see the domain name that i have just used here for capturing the tenant detail or the domain name and automatically it will create that user with the domain account enable true now the nickname again i need to change the nickname and i will again make it admin one that's it and enter that's done so here you can see one object is created with the name of admin one user principal name is here and user type is member if you want to get the detail of your azure ad users just use this command that is get azure ad user press enter now here you will be having the list of all the user which is added in your tenant so this is the list of user remember uh, i have just added uh, the user that is uh, admin 1 this was the user user 1 that i have added directly with the azure portal now we will be adding a group so for that i will be using again the powershell command so for that i will be using the first command 
for adding the group. That is a new Azure AD group. This is a PowerShell command to create a new Azure AD group. So what this command is doing? New Azure AD group. This is the command to create a new group. I have to give the name of that new group. So I have given junior admins. Okay. And here mail enable false. Mail enable false means anyone who can give me the answer. Mail mail enable false means what type of group will be created? Yes, anyone? I have just explained you that when we are creating a group, there are two type of group options are there. Okay, I've got the answer. Perfect security. So when you have mail enable true, it means you want to create an Office 365 group. And as we are creating it for admins, so we do not want to enable the mail and it will be a security group. Security enable true and the nickname. It will be junior admins. Done. Yes. So this object is created. Now if you want to take the list of all the Azure AD groups, use this command that is get Azure AD groups. Now here it has given me the list of all the group which is there in my tenant available right now. If you remember already this test admin was there. Second, that was a senior admin that I have created with the Azure portal and third, this is a junior admin group that I have just created with the help of PowerShell. Power. Now next our task is to add the user to our current group. OK, so I will be using this command. This command is used to get the user that you want to add to the group. So here it is taking get the Azure AD user command and it is going to get the name of the user, but which user you want. So for that I have used filter and I want mail nickname should be equal to. So here as uh, my user name was admin one if you remember I have added admin one. So I'm using nickname admin one. It will be filtered and it will be saved in this user. Dollar user. And so this command have passed the username admin one to this user. Now I will be using the next command. Now this command that is add az ad group member. So this command is going to add user into the group. Okay, which user? The user that is there. That is dollar user dot user principal name. So this user is what the user which is filtered over there with my previous command, and the target group. What is the name of your target group? That is junior admins. That is done, and press enter. So this is giving me warning that this command that is using a preview API version and is subject to breaking change in a future release because now you have added a user to a group. You can avoid this warning. Next. You have to check whether this user is added or not. So for that. We will use this command get Azure AD group member. Group display name, which user, which group that is junior admin. Press enter. Yeah. So here it is giving me the list of the user who are part of this group. Admin one. And this is the user principal name of the user. I hope it is clear to everyone. Any doubt? So we have used two methods to add the user and group. First, we have used the Azure portal, and now I have used a PowerShell and we automate user created using PowerShell. Thank you.
uh see we have option to use the power shell to go for the bulk operation so here you need to use a csv file that again you can easily download from the azure ad portal so you will get the csv file get all that is a, pro a proper format as per the format you have to fill the detail of all the user for example 100 or 200 whatever the users are there the same way we were uploading that file to that azure portal same way we have a command powershell command that you can use uh, to add or to upload the user from that csv file that powershell command you can use but automation uh, it is not the automation but here's the delegation method you can do uh, like uh, the sorry the membership option for example i have a group now i want to uh, make that group uh, like automatically by using the criteria users should be automatically added to that group for example whoever is uh, uh, whoever is from security department for example i am using creating a, a user and i have to put some detail like his location his department and all so whoever a user who is a from particular department or from particular location he should be automatically the part of any particular group so that can be done see as i said uh, the way like you can use both the option you can use the interface or you can use the powershell both the way but uh, you know of course you have a interface which is very easy to use but yes there are some operations some commands that or some uh, functions that can only be used by the powershell commands and in most of the organization, there are many admins who prefer to use the PowerShell. Because, you know, clicking on the option, going to that option, just by, you know, copy and paste the command and your work is done. If you will compare the timing I have used by creating the user by my PowerShell command and the time I have used by creating the user from the interface, the less timing was consumed by using the PowerShell. That was a more easier way to use the commands, not the interface. But it's totally your choice. That's why I'm showing you all the options. Whichever you feel like is the easy one, you can use. But as uh, PowerShell and the commands option is always like for the time saving option. Yes, correct. But yes, uh, there are some operations that cannot be performed by the interface. So you have to know the PowerShell command for the same. Okay, so I hope this was clear to everyone. Now I am heading towards the next option that is the CLI commands. So for that, I'm just closing it or directly here you can use bash. So it is asking switch to bash in cloud shell confirm. So now it is ready to use. So I have my command already written with my one note. So I will be using the very first command. It is going to get my domain detail. Domain name, it is going to get the domain name. Enter. Next, this command I'm going to use for creating the user. That is AZ AD. Let me just type in the next page. Azure AD user create display name. If you want to continue with the same display name, you can do. If you want to change, like for example, I want to make it for admin two. So, admin two password, I will keep it like that. And I will be making it for admin two.
so this is created. So these are the other details that you want to give. You can like uh, job detail, mail, mobile number, office station, and all that all can be given over there. Next. This is going to give you the user list. And the command is Azure AD user list. And output in a table. So now all the users are there. User 1 that I added with Azure portal. Admin 1 and admin 2. Admin 2 that I have just created by using the CLI. Next, I will be creating a group. So for that, I have this command. Azure AD group create. Those who have worked with uh, DOS and all, they can find it or Unix and all, they can find it familiar. The group is created. Let me show you the group list. The same way I have used for the user list. Here it is showing me I have uh, four groups. That is uh, senior admins, junior admins, test admins, and service desk. So the group that I have just created, the name is service desk. Now the next task is what? We have to add the user to this group. So for that, let me take this command. So this command, it is going to get the list of the user, Azure AD user list. It is going to filter the display name, which is equal to this, but I do not want to go with this. I want to add my admin to that I added over there. Uh, yeah, this one, admin to. Enter. So my user I have got and stored in user. It's creating the object ID with this user. Next, I have to add this user to group. Azure AD group member add group to the service desk and member is what? The ID with the object ID that is created over there. Enter. That is done. And finally, let me show you the list of the member for the group. So let's check whether it is added or not. And enter. So here, this user is added to this group. So for this lab, we have performed three exercises. First exercise that was to add user in group by the Azure portal. Second, by using the PowerShell. Third, and third one was the Bash. Now our last exercise for this current uh, lab, that is to um, add the virtual machine contributor role to this current group that uh, we are working with. That was the service test. I hope this is clear to everyone. Now I need to go back to my, let me just exit over there. back to Azure Active Here, just let me show you the groups. Okay, so all four groups are ready. 
now we have to perform this exercise where we will be have to perform two task first we will be creating a resource group and then we will be assigning the service desk virtual machine contributor permission to this resource group okay so as directly we cannot assign the role to this okay like let me check like for example i am clicking to service desk and if i am going to azure role here you can just check it out whether any role is assignment is, is listed over there or not but here i do not get any option to add the role so for that we have to create a resource group okay then only we can assign the role so for that let me click on home find out resource group So here we will be creating a resource group. And uh, make sure your subscription is selected. Give the group name. So I am just giving a V 500 lux. Region, I am OK with the same. Uh, that's it. Preview and create. So my resource group is ready. Let me click on it. Now here in this resource, just click on access control. That is I am. Click on it. Now click on add. Click on add a role assignment. So the role that I'm looking for, that is virtual machine contributor. Just find out that role. Machine. So here I have virtual machine contributor. Just click on that. Next. So here virtual machine contributor role. Okay. Now assign access to access to what user group or service principal. So we have to give this access to group. Okay. So this will be selected. Now click on that. So we have to find out the group that was service. Yeah, this was the service desk. Click on it and select. <coughs> Once it is done, click on review and ex uh, review and assign. Review and assign. That's it. <clears throat> so here you will notice view my access. This role is added. Let me go back to that group. If I go to that group in Azure Active Directory. So here you can see virtual machine contributor role is added to this for this group. So successfully our first lab is done where we uh, have created few users and groups. We have tried different ways to create users and group and then we have tried how we can assign role to a group. I hope it was clear to everyone. Patient see, there is uh, no difference. As you will see, the end result is same using the uh, like uh, uh, interface, using the PowerShell, or using the command. 
the align right but the main thing is that how you are comfortable you know more user as i said who are more uh, user friendly with the uh, like uh, command line interface they are more toward the dos and all so for them you know that command is more easy to learn and they are more uh, find that commands easy for powershell users who are more you know interested toward the powershell command who frequently powershell command for handling other resources and all so for that the powershell command is more comfortable there is no difference in the end result no absolutely no result uh, no difference yes pradya we have three ways as i said you can use uh, portal directly you can use powershell command or cli you have three ways to do that okay but as i said we have also option to go with a bulk operation so for bulk again you can use the powershell command or you can use the portal directly is it clear everyone okay can you please show me a thumbs up if if this much was clear to everyone so then we can uh, move ahead towards the next exercise that was for uh, multi factor authentication okay for that i need to use my office 365 uh, azure ad because there i have uh, uh, the premium features because in this azure portal azure ad i do not have the p2 features p2 license so i need to switch to my microsoft 365 account where i have uh, premium features okay so let me just click on that okay so those who are office Since sixty uh, admins, they might be having idea that now Azure Active Directory is a part of Entra now. So when you are using Azure Portal directly, you can use uh, Active Directory. But when you are working in uh, Microsoft three sixty five environment, for accessing Azure Active Directory, you need to use Entra. So here. if you remember earlier the option under the admin center it was for azure active directory but now it is identity so now here you can see uh, now we are redirected to microsoft entra admin center and now the azure active directory has become the part of entra admin center everything is same the way uh, we are handling azure active directory in azure portal the same way is active directory is over there absolutely no change <clears throat>
I do not know. I have observed and I walk with Entra and it works a little slow. What happened? Why is it taking too much time? Till the time it is being refreshed, I will come back to Azure portal. Don't waste the time. Okay. For example, if you have to set up the multi-factor authentication for the user, so for that, uh, what happened? Okay, so I have got the list of all the user. Let me click on per user MFA. So I'm going to set up the multi-factor authentication. Now here we are on, on the window for multi-factor authentication. Here you have all the users listed over there. So now you can check the multi-factor authentication is disabled for everyone. So for example, you want to select the user that is admin one that you have just added. So when you want to enable the multi-factor authentication for this user, so just click on enable. Enable multi-factor authentication. Now you can see this multi-factor authentication is enabled. Now when user is going to log in, he needs to in, he need to register himself for the multi-factor authentication. But he can avoid that for few days. If you want to enforce that without setting up the multi-factor authentication, he cannot proceed ahead. So for that, you can enforce. So when you are enforcing for multi-factor authentication, user cannot avoid. 
he has to first register for multi factor authentication then only he can move ahead so i have enforced multi factor authentication for admin one if you want to perform the bulk operation like at uh, same time you want to make it for different users so you can select multiple user and you can enable the multi factor authentication for the that was for multi factor authentication so let me let uh, uh, let me just try conditional access policy so here i'm going just going to click on azure ad conditional access you remember i have explained about the conditional access like on the basis of any condition if you want to assign any access or you want to block access or you want to uh, give uh, multi factor authentication to any user you can go with the uh, conditional access so here you can create the policies okay so it is saying that i have to go with the azure premium as i said azure premium is not available uh, okay so i can try azure ad premium i hope i could get yeah please so if you have already activated this trial before Okay, so it is saying okay. I have already used Azure AD Premium P2, so I cannot use it again. No problem. I need to go back to my Office 365 account. So okay so now here you can see i have few policies already i have created over there it was the conditional access policy few are on few are off let me just try creating a new policy for you so under conditional access policies give the name of the policy that why you are creating this policy so i will make it uh Eighty five hundred test policy. Now here it is asking you: you are assigning this policy to any users or what? Or if you have any resources for the same? So here, if I want to try for any user, let me just click on a user. So here, if you want to apply it to all the user and exclude any user, you can click on exclude. if you want to include any particular user click on select user and group here if there is any guest user and user you can click on user so i test user available with me so i have this test ad user and select i will try with one more user Two users are selected. 
Now here, if you have any target resources, no. If you want to go with any condition over there, just select for the same. Then the condition, these are the condition that you get. Like when you want this condition access policy to work, like if there is any user risk, if there is any sign in risk, if you have configured, for example, if you want to make it when there is any user risk. So do you want to configure like whenever any user risk will be detected and it, it is high or it is medium, this policy will be activated. So if you want to configure it on the basis of user risk, sign in risk, you can configure from here directly. Then if there is any device, for example, user is using uh, Android, then he should go with the multi-factor authentication. OK, like for example, in your organization, you have provided uh, devices to your user and that all are iOS devices. OK, so when they are using iOS devices, no problem. But whenever user is going to use any Android devices to log in, he must go with the multi-factor authentication or his, his login should be blocked or he should be given access on the basis of some criteria. Depends. So that all device-based condition you can set over there. Then there is an access control. Do you want to grant the access? If you want to grant, just click on it. Now here you have option to block the access or grant the access. So when you are going to grant the access, on what basis? Means I want whenever his user is going to log in, he should go with a multi-factor authentication. So for that, I will click on that option. Require multi-factor authentication. Along with the multi-factor authentication, do you want that require authentication strength? So requires a uh, means like he has to go with that authentication strength, like it will be more uh, strong for the user to authenticate. Then if you want any required device to be marked as compliant, so whatever the devices are compliant, if he's trying to log in from that devices, then there is no issue. He can log in. Or required hybrid as already joined devices, so that, that all criteria are over there. He required password change and all, so that all you can it out. So when it is done like here right now, just for the testing, I have used grant access required multi-factor authentication. That is done and select. <clears throat> so once it is done, uh, you want to enable the policy on, off, whatever. So report only means this will not be activated, but this is only in a report mode. I want to enable it right now, so I will click on on. Click on create. So my policy must be listed here. Yeah. Here I have is the 500 test policy. It is created and it is on. See here, as a security engineer, you need to know that when you are making the policy, it is very important for you to track the policies, whether uh, the state, you know, sometimes it happens the policy is created when it is not working on. So here you have to keep on check that yes, whether the status is on or off. Sometimes when the policy is not working, the main reason is that the policy is off. It is not enabled right now. Or sometimes you have created a policy, but it is not needed anymore. <clears throat> or for a particular time period, you have to keep it off. So in that case, you can control the state of your policy. <clears throat> so let's just try whether this policy is working out <clears throat> or not. So for that, I will just try login with the user. <clears throat> I will try with my incognito window.
So I will sign in with uh, any one of the user that is added. I remember there was two user added. One was Payal and KD test user. So let me try with the Payal because I remember the password that I used with that. I hope it should work fast and okay. Okay, so now you can see as I have set up the multi factor authentication for this user, user is not able to log in directly with the login ID and password. This is the additional method of the authentication that he has to go for. So a text message is sent. On this number, let me click on it. It is my number. So let me check whether I have received a code or not. I have received a verification code. Let me try it. Okay. So this method was already set up. This is not the first time I'm using. That's why. Else, if the this is a newly created one time you are trying. So first you have to set up the multi-factor authentication for you. Means user will be asked that uh, he has to uh, like for example I am a administrator and I have set up the multi-factor authentication method. That is a text message. So user need to register his mobile number for going ahead with the multi-factor authentication policy. So this user has already registered his mobile number. So that's why when he is trying to log in and he is asked for the multi-factor authentication, that uh, code was sent to his number. So now user is able to log in successfully. So I hope it was clear that how conditional access policy work. If you have you have set up it uh, for any particular user for any particular application. So when a user is trying to use any application, it will not be asked. But for that particular application that you have used, he will be asked for the multi-factor authentication. I hope this much was clear to you guys. Okay, uh, wait session for five days. Uh, no, this is not the paid session for five days. This is a webinar. This is the one day session. This is to give you the overview of AZ 500 exam. Okay, if you have to go for the paid session, for that you can go with the go for uh, Chetali, he can give you the detailed information for the same. Okay, now coming to the difference between P1 and P2 plan is that see, uh, when you are going with the Azure Active Directory, there are three main uh, plans for the same. First one is the default one, or you can say the free one. Free one is what? Like whenever you are going with the Azure portal or Office 365, by default, you can get a Azure Active Directory. P1 is what? P1 and P2 is the premium features, it's a premium plan where you get some premium features. Okay, P2 is the uh, one where you have all the premium features that is available in P1 plus the extra one like for example, uh, identity uh, protection that I believe that is not available with P1. Then conditional access that is again not available. And uh, there is one more, um, yes, privilege access management that is not available with P1. So let me just give you the link for the same where you can have the detailed idea. What is the difference between uh, Azure AD licenses?
was in Microsoft link. Uh, Let me check here because not is a part of enter, no? Yeah, so here you can check it out. This is a premium P P1 and P2, the price detail and the features. Like here you can see some features which is disabled in P1. This is the basic one. No? Basic one is only for just creating the identity. That's it. Rest all the premium features like uh, self service enable self service. This option is not in P1, but is there in P2. Multi factor authentication, connection access. This is not fit uh, free, but it is available in P1 and P2. So, yeah, I think in my Azure portal, the P1 even is not available, only the free is available. So, that's why I'm not able to use the condition access. Then you can check it uh, identity protection and all that is again not available with the P1. It is available with P2 only. So I'm sharing this link. You can get the detail. Uh, you are asking about the network and the storage. A storage, I don't think would be able to cover because I think uh, I have few more identity related lab. Then I am planning to cover the lock, and then I am able. I am uh, planning to cover the one more lab for the uh, that is firewall. I will be covering. Storage I would not be able to cover because it takes too much time and that's for today's session. Overview session, I would not be able to cover that lab. I'm so sorry for the same. Uh, I couldn't get you, Sandeep. Can we get recording? Uh, recording, I think you will be given. But yes, I think this session will be posted in YouTube. I think that Vishali was... Uh, Anything else? Any way to record time spent in the webinar? Ah, uh, Nandu Kumar, I couldn't get you. Any way to record time spent in the webinar? I couldn't get your question. Like, what you want to ask? This is eight hour session that I can tell you what I have understood. You are asking for the timing, I think. It's an eight hour session. So, yes, the timing is from 10 to 6. One o'clock, I will be giving you break. Uh, one thirty, I will be giving you break. Any course completion certification provided? Uh, not the course completion certification, but yes, course completion achievement batch will be provided to you and that batch is more valuable than any other certification like uh, uh, because that is directly added to your microsoft profile that chaitali has already shared that link with you that is a course completion batch so that will be provided from us and that will be added to your certification profile so you can even add that batch to uh, in your resume that yes you have completed this particular course and all that you can use. Any other, no other certification is provided. Ch Chaitali, I think we are providing the uh, YouTube. Uh, we, it is posted on YouTube, right? Not the direct recording. So, 
lecture tally answer for this one. So I am uh, going back. So that condition access policy was covered. One more thing I just uh, want to show you that was. So uh, yeah, I will be showcasing you this lab also that is uh, working with our road policy, how we can set up the road policies. Then I will be covering uh, resource manager lock. Then uh, condition access policy that I have just covered. So before the break, I would like to cover the identity protection part. Okay, so before uh, the break, I will be covering uh, fast with the identity protection policies, and then I will be uh, covering the privilege identity management part after the break. Let me check another lab if I can do. This library synchronization would not be able to possible because it takes around one hour at least to set up the lab and all everything. So for that, uh, would would not be able to possible to show you the lab but yes there was one more lab i would like to try that is i think for the firewall i would like to try let's see okay now i just wanted to go with the identity protection so for that let me just try typing identity protection yes this is azure ad identity protection So I hope you remember I have explained Azure AD identity protection. So where you can set up three policies. So here you can see at the left side of my screen, you have three policies, user risk policy, sign in risk policy, and multi-factor authentication. As I told you about the multi-factor authentication, you can uh, set up multi-factor authentication directly by selecting the user and enable the policy for the same. Second option you can set up by using the condition access policy. And third option is that with identity protection, you can set up the multi-factor authentication policy. Let's just try for each one. Let me first select the user risk policy. So when you will be selecting user risk policy here, you need to select the user or group that you want to include for that particular user. Generally, what happened? We uh, go for this user risk policies for our uh, admins or for user where we think that, yes, there may be the identity risk for the user risk for uh, this particular group of users. So here you have the option to add that group. You can, you can even apply this for all the user in your organization. You can select the individual of the group to so select that. Add a user or group. For example. For example, I'm using the same user select. So once the user is added now here, you can set up the risk like when you want to uh, this risk, uh, this policy should work when there is a high risk, medium or low. See, there are different type of risk that comes under user risk uh, policies and every risk is having different uh, like uh, uh, whether it is high or medium or low. So you have to see that do you want to be notified only for the low you want to notify when it is high or what? So I want to go with the high one. And then I want the medium and low. It should be avoided. Only the high one I want to concentrate. Now what uh, X, Now what you want to do? Just click on access. Do you want to directly block the access? Or you want to allow access by password change? So here in my policy, I have set up allow access, but user need to go with the password chain. Like if he is really authorized user, he can change his password. I'm not enabling this policy right now because it, it actually create problem for me later on 
uh, for the testing and all. So I'm just showcasing you this. You need to enable and this policy will be activated. Same way. You have signed in this policy. You can select the user. Just click on it. Add the user or the group. This time I'm adding a group over there. So I have the security group, Azure AD security group. Uh, no, I will use this activity group and select. Now security user is not going to sign in. So that's why. So this is added. Once it is added, here, access control. If you want to block, you can directly block. In my case, user need to go with a multi-factor authentication. Once it is done, you can enable your policy. This is how you can go with the sign in this policy. And the third one that comes under identity protection, that is multi factor authentication. So, here for a group of user or user, you can directly set up the policy. So, these users will always be logged in by providing a multi factor authentication. So, here just select the group or the users. That's it. And for this group, you can enable the policy and save. The difference between the conditional access policy as I have set a multi factor authentication and the difference between this policy under identity protection is only that here directly I'm selecting the group and user and policy will be applied. But in conditional access policy, I have applied multi-factor authentication, but there were different options to select the condition, not only with the user, but basis of the location, devices, application, and so on. It's done. That's it. So this was all about the identity protection policy. Now here under report, you can check it out. If there is any risky user, you can get the detail for the same. These all are the risky users. Risk level was high. Risk was last updated on this date. Risky sign in. So, under risky sign in, pricing, so. Like generally, you know what happened? I uh, use this style account and I if I change my location, like I, I mostly am working from home. So when I travel to uh, any client location or I switch to any other uh, any other country or any other uh, city, then it detect that as a sign in this. So I think, uh, yeah, this activity is, is captured over there. This was on the state. OK, so this is the user at risk detected alert, any risk detection. So that all reporting part as a security engineer, you can come here and take all the reports over there. So that was all about the identity protection after the break. Let's take a break now. It's 1.30 and we will take a break for one hour. Have a good lunch. We'll come back. And we'll start with the um, what topic we were having. Yeah, this was privilege identity management. So once it is done, we will be doing the lab for the same, and then we will be covering with the Azure policies and so on. So let's take a break for one hour. I hope any question. Uh,
Ah, uh, the PPT is not sure. But yes, see guys, don't worry about the PPTs and all. I will be sharing all the study material, all the lab material with you. It will be really helpful for you to perform the lab. And uh, even the labs I am doing, I will be sharing all the lab steps uh, that will be really helping you out to do it later on on your uh, trial environment. Plus, I will be sharing you the course link. Uh, whatever the uh, slides I am using, that slide is, you know, just everything is there from the course material which is shared. You know, you have just used a link that is shared by the Chetali where you have achieved the learning achievement batch. If you will go to that link now, you will observe that everything is written in a crystal clear language about AZ500, all the modules. I will be taking you to that learning link and I will be showcasing you how you can uh, do the study and all what should be the pattern of that. Don't worry, I will be guiding you for all the study materials and all. I will make sure that everything should be available with you in terms of study material that will help you to prepare for the AZ500 exam. So don't worry for the slides and all everything. Everything is available from the Microsoft online. Okay, and this uh, recording is again, see guys, the, it takes time sometimes to upload. Okay, so don't worry, it will be surely updated. It may take some time, but it will be uploaded. Okay, so just take a break, have a lunch, and we'll come back. <laughs> 